All right, folks, we are back at it. The highest show in the land, the Patrick Gale show. You know what time it is. Making my pops happy right now because he said I missed the show last week. He, he, he did say that, Coach. He missed the show last week. So we're back. Episode 13, he said we need to get our act together. But <laughs> we are back. <laughs> tell, tell pops we're back on our grind, man. Tell him we're back on our grind. So we apologize. We apologize. No doubt. Well, hey, look, coach, we got we got good vibes around the team right now. Uh, went up to Fort Valley for their homecoming. Heck of a crowd in Fort Valley. Nice road trip up there. And got the job done, man. Coach, it's going to make you feel good seeing your guys persevere on the road now. Out at home on the road and get this well, well, I'll tell you what. Um, Fort Valley's playing really well. They're playing really well. They had come off a win against Allen. Um, I think they they just lost a close one against Benedict right after us. They're playing really well. They're gonna they're gonna hurt some teams um, down the stretch and in the conference tournament. So, not only was it a, a big time win in a really big time environment, but we we beat a team that's that's playing their best basketball at the right time right now. Um, they got some guys that that have stepped up, and they got some guys that I don't think they're gonna want to end their season anytime soon. So that was a huge win for our guys and our seniors stepped up and, and especially our guards, we had really good guard play. So I was very proud of our guys and their performance. And Jameer went off. I saw Jameer went off. He did. He did. That's, that's one of the seniors I wanted to, I wanted to mention May 8th. It was because he's on the show. I mean, <laughs> you know, what, 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 what more can I say? You know, he, he stepped up, he, he shot the ball confidently, but he got to the free throw line. Um, I believe he got five rebounds. He had an and one late in the game, uh, powering up in the paint. He he has played. He he's playing his is that's the best game I've seen him play since he's been here. And he's played some really good games. He had seven threes last year against FAMU, but he he played a really good inside out game uh, this past this past game. No doubt, like you said, Coach. Like you said, this is his time of year, man. He has to make it work, man. He's, he he he's earned his in his in his blood now, knowing that. His career is is ticking away, so he has to show up and help lead the guys. You know, even off the bench, Reggie can shoot off the bench as well. Another senior for you coming in there, do, giving you a boost as well against Fort Valley, because that's what you got to do this time of year. We need that's every all hands on deck right now. Well, they, I could tell. Um, we we practiced early morning this morning. I could tell they they want to keep practicing. They don't want the season to be over, and that we're one of many teams that can say that. So. Uh, this is the best time of year for coaches because you, we don't really have to say much. They're already locked in, and practices are are kind of uh, bittersweet. They're fun, but you know, you know, pretty soon, you know, it's going to be over. It's just when do you decide it's over? So, like all coaches say, do you want to wash and fold or do you want to wash and hang? So we'll see. No doubt, and, and young Javian gave you some too as well, coach. Against what another Valley. senior? Yep, another senior that that um. Played huge minutes, had a two big time uh, layups, um, and had really, really great passes and kind of saved possessions with seeing the floor. He's playing his best basketball again. I've seen since I've I've coached him since he's been here. So um, if we can just continue that, and it was on the road, and that was what was the most um, uh, encouraging to see. Um, they they won that game. That that was something that they they stepped up and they won it. They knew that we just needed a win. So now we move forward to uh, Savannah State, another team playing really well. It's going to be a tough environment. It's always tough to play at Savannah State, and that just happens to where the conference tournament is going to be. Yeah, Savannah State's also to play it, no doubt, man. And like I said, Coach, at least you have some this week some time to recover the bodies because them games are coming at you fast there and getting that kind of reset, soft reset to get the bodies in kill healed so you can make this next push and have the gas in the tank for Savannah when the SRAC2 tournament starts uh, there first week of March there. Absolutely. We need it. We definitely need it. Um, we, we had an injury um, – we uh to Taron Wofford in his first game back and he played really well. He hit a couple of big uh, threes, had uh, some some great mid range shots, and then um, on a on a breakaway dunk, um, he got some contact and 
Um, he's in concussion protocol, so hopefully we can get him back um, ASAP. But it's it's um it's it's the war of attrition, war of attrition for our guys, and we've had to deal with injuries all year. So we 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 um at least we can say that we we have battled and won that that adversity battle. So now it's just about getting together, getting cohesive, and moving forward to the most uh, exciting time of the season. Yes, it is. It's truly March Madness because of future. But 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 for you all, it starts February because you know we're in a situation we got to really win games and, and get this to the right stuff so we can go into Savannah the right way. And it's just so happy you get to get a, a trial run of Savannah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, sometimes the Lord will will do things to 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 get you prepared for what you got to go through. So we're, you know, this this uh, road trip. I looked at it. You know, preseason, it's like, man, it's going to be a big trip. And no mistake about that. It's definitely a big trip. And we got to turn back around and go to Savannah um, after uh, this weekend, the following week for a conference tournament. No doubt, Coach. And for you, man, I know you've been uh, out here seeing the kids, talking to kids. So how's it been to go out there on the trail a little bit and uh, look, look, look for these future ramps? Unfortunately, there are guys in our program who will be leaving. You have to, have to replace them. So how's that been? going out in the field trying to find uh young young future family members. Well we've been we've been uh we've been hitting that southeast pretty hard. We were in we were in Alabama we were in SIAC territory, Alabama. Um actually uh I was driving through uh Jacksonville late last night coming back uh, off the road um about maybe one in the morning. So um hitting hitting the, the recruiting trail hard. Um a lot of young men are playing their last high school games. So wanting to see them in those pressure situations and want to go talk to them, you know, right after their season to see where their mindset is. And I will say this, our conference has a lot of young freshmen. And that's because the high school talent in, you know, our part of the world, Southeast, is is really, really high. Um there's, there's, even even in a, a small place in Alabama, you got guys that's putting up big time numbers and and watching him work out. Um, I was I was blown away with his with his skill set. There's a lot of young talented players that are playing high school basketball. The future of basketball is really bright. So, and how is uh this year changed with the, a lot of COVID guys trying to about to cycle out? So, a high school dudes more have to be. Picked up now, we still trying to get the older guys out of JUCO and you know, or the guys who played D1 and want to come back down. So I, how was recruiting been with this climate kind of getting up normal and how it was pre-COVID? Well, I think the high school coaches got the message. So they're doing – they're having – a lot of high school coaches and trainers are having college regimen um, for – their their prospects and they're hitting you know young men earlier. I went to a high school practice, I want to say Monday, and I'm thinking that the you know obviously you got the scout team, you got the the starters, and I'm thinking the scout teams JV kids, and he's like, nah, coach, they're they're on the team. And the only reason I say that is because I'm thinking, okay, you got the JV team to be your scout team, but there were a lot of freshmen, obviously, and and um sophomores on the team that play in varsity and that's huge first of all you're giving them plays and they're executing the other team's plays but the fact that you have these young guys on varsity and and he's speaking of a ninth grader and saying he's going to be pretty good but you got to be used to the work of the level you want to get to and the fact that they're already working and confident I mean, it's it's. I was again. I'm blown away with the uh, the young talent, man. Um, don't let anybody say that you know basketball in, in this country is is dying out. No, sir. It's it's definitely um, the coaches are doing the high school coaches, middle school coaches, trainers. They're doing a great job, and I think um, now that the COVID players are cycling out, you're going to see. It's going to get back to that one and done, and and, and the talent pool is going to be high, not to mention the best uh, incoming college freshman in the country who's probably going to be a one and done, who could be a one and done right now uh, uh, in, in uh, Florida right now at Mount Verge. So um, there's there's a lot of talent, ta a lot of talented high school uh, players out there. 
No doubt, Coach. Like I said, you know, <laughs> you know what, Coach, I feel like, like you said, it's more structured now in a lot yeah. of situations because I know, like, when I played, it was more like we was going to run five motion. Yeah. It wasn't really yeah. no play with five motion. Yeah. yeah. Then yeah. we ready, we running actions. Yeah. Front side, yes. second side, and third yes. side. You know? Well, here's one of the things I, I am not I, this way I was taught. And I'm not ashamed to admit this. A lot of times I'll go to high school practices. I'd rather go to high school practice than a game. A, because I want to see how that young man responds to his coaching and and how and most of the time high school practices are early in the morning. I want to see how his motor is that early in the morning. But the other reason is I steal so much stuff from high school coaches. And I wasn't disappointed when I went and saw my guy, uh, Derek Felder, down in South Plantation High School and the stuff he was running. And he played Division II basketball at a high level. He coached uh, at the Division II level at the PSAC. So a lot of stuff that he runs, you know, uh, D1s are running, but the, his mentor and, and his coaches are the ones that kind of initiated and, and, you know, implemented those systems and those actions. So uh, there's so many coaches out there that do a great job at the high school level. And that's why, to me, you know, the players are ready to play at the next level. And again, I can only speak for my conference, but, you know, our freshmen, you know, not just one, we have a couple of freshmen that start, you know, that, you know, uh, Cam uh, Evans that comes from Sumter High School and and um, his coach and his coaching staff, one of, one of his coaches actually played for me, Jawan High, you know, so there's so many uh, players, um, uh, the young man um, at Wheeler, uh, DJ, he he came from um, uh, Wheeler High School, played for Larry Thompson. You know, enough said about that. You know, there's so many players in the conference, so many freshmen that are like, wow, these these guys are really, really good. And you can't believe they're freshmen or sophomores. Um, the young man at Clark, uh, uh, Shamani Fuller, you know, played at a big time program up in the Bronx. Um, again, Guys that, you know, a lot of people don't realize when kids say, yeah, I think I can play at that level, you better you better watch some D2 basketball and know. But I will say this, there are a lot of kids that can play at the D2 level right now in high school. No doubt, because I, I'll tell you, it's not for us. I practiced, was it, 245s. The, the bell rung at 205. We had to be on the court dressed about 245. <laughs> you know what? That was us. That was us back in the day. And, but now... I tell you what, these teams practice. Uh, I'd be remiss, can't mention high school basketball without uh, Lawton Williams down at Norland High School. He has a big time player, uh, Marcus Allen, that that you'll know about uh, the next couple of years in college. But but um, he he practices a lot of times six a.m. and he does a lot of lot of um, great things for the young men um, to get them prepared to play at the next level. So that's just one of one coach out of many at the at the high school level that it ain't it ain't 245 anymore. It's 6 a.m. It's 530. Matter of fact, I had managers um, or I have managers and I've had um, young ladies that came to me that wanted to be a manager. And when we told them, you know, we sometimes we got to get, get up in the morning. Oh, yeah, we we have practice in the mornings every day. I said, okay, so what time did you have to be at school? Oh, some of those young ladies said 4.30 and 5 o'clock in the morning. I'm like, whoa. But they do practice that early. So That blows my mind, Coach. Like, class was a 7.05. Well, JR, like I said, <laughs> <laughs> hey, not saying you struggle, but when, when people talk about, oh, this generation is this and that, y'all – Y'all don't have a clue what this generation is doing. You got a lot of kids that get up in the morning and work out and practice and go to school and after school will get in the weight room, get in the track or, or get on the court and work again. There's a lot of young men out there that are very regimented and that's why they have success at the next level so quickly. Yeah, I, I had to adjust coach. I was used to in football, it was 245. <laughs> On the field, <laughs> so because I now, some you it was five to eight. Before. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, okay, so we we have to admit that we have more knowledge about you know the sports science 
and the right time to practice, the right nutrition, you know, how, how important sleep is, how important your mental health is. So these young people have more access to that info. So mm -hmm. I just like to shout out our young generation. A lot of people talk negatively about them, but you have a lot of young men. You know, I know the young men I spoke to, they're, they're awesome. They're humble. They're, they, they love the Lord. They, they listen to their coach. They just want an opportunity. I've never heard a young man that I've talked to tell me, oh, yeah, coach, I'm going to come in there and how many guards you got because I'm going to start over them. They're, coach, I just want an opportunity. I just want to get better. Um, and then you can see the humility come out of them. So I think that we 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 have a bright future when it comes to young basketball players. No doubt, coach. Coach, it's going to really uh, it's going to really make you feel good. Uh, early in the day, I was going football with my father. Oh, that's big time. That's big. So so the spark is back. The spark is back. Huh? <laughs> I was literally throwing the football with my father for about thirty minutes early today, man. That's awesome. That's awesome, man. And that's that just goes to show how important it is, how important, you know, dads are um, and, and parents are. And again, you know, we can't talk about young people without talking about their parents. You know, I, I talk to a lot of players that have their dads not only involved, but their dads, you know, sometimes they, they give me knowledge and wisdom or vice versa, you know, just men kind of talking to each other. And a lot of times when I when I bring uh, uh, prospects, when I talk to the parents, we don't talk about basketball. We talk about everything else. So um, it's good to know that, you know, just you speaking about that, people can understand how important that is, man. That That's everything. That's everything. And, and mind you all, my father is going to be 85 years old this year. Wow. Wow. God bless him. And, and still, still knock you out <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and yeah. still knock you out if you ever disrespect. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. He, he told me he's like, son, I, I feel good throwing the football team. Remember, because uh, <laughs> that's, that's, that's when you get. You see, that's why you hear where you are today, son. The football, the basketball. He said, he said the labrum and it's <laughs> in the shoulder. It still works a little bit if you want to <laughs> want to pop off a little bit yeah. or have somebody pop off. He, he can throw a little pop too, right? Yes, yes. You know, it was fun. I right. pop was still spinning, still pushing the football coach. He was, still, it was about 20 yards. He threw the ball 20 yards to me at yep. 84. Yep. Hey, man, where you think you get it from, man? You know, that, 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 that's what you got pouring in your blood right now, man. So I tell, you know, obviously, you know, we love pops. Big up, big up, senior. Big up, senior. Yeah. UJR, he's senior. <laughs> yes. And, and coach, he was fired up too, coach. You can see the fires are his eye. So, hey, I, I told you, he still got it, man. He still got it because he understands it's about inside. It's about how you take care of that temple. So, and obviously fatherhood, man. There's nothing like there's nothing like um throwing a ball with your son. And and I got a chance to do that a little bit. I, I see my son and I was showing him his shooting form a little bit, and I saw how he Worked on it, and man, it's nothing like fatherhood, man. Oh yeah, it's a great day, man. It's seeing you know, just being being inspired by that, knowing it, you know. Like I said, you know, my mom, she like she 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 supports me, but it's like, do 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 you love it, son? Do see my mom's the in, in, intellectual. My mom is <laughs> intellectual. She's about reading for knowledge and history, and she's like, do you, you should get get you a book. <laughs> I got books, mom. <laughs> but, but it's that balance. It's that balance, man. That's that's what you need. You have to you have to educate your brain, but you also just like you exercise your brain, you have to exercise everything else. So it's that balance, the holistic living. Yes. And you know what, coaches, like I said, having supportive people around, like you know what I'm saying? Yes. Sports is not my mother's thing she had, but she still she supports me in doing it. That's very important for this out here. Have people in your corner who support you, you know. That's right. I, that's right. And support you about conditions. You know, that's something that, that my dad talks about a lot, coaches. Like people people don't want to support you with conditions. That's right. It's un unconditional. It's conditional. <laughs> well, well, that's why I'm so, you know, with with the season we're having, obviously I've been through a lot of trials and tribulations. And that's why I I definitely am grateful that I'm going through it because I can have that testimony for others. See, I don't have to wait to win you know championships or wait to win you know 
15, 14 games in a row to say, hey, I'm a winner. And this is how you do it. First and foremost, get in close with the Lord and and know that as long as you work hard and stay close to him, you're going to be fine. And it says something for people that are in, you know, situations like, man, that's tough, but can still profess their love and their faithfulness, you know, to the Lord. So I'm I'm going to I'm learning to do the same thing. I'm not perfect. You know, um, I think I told you earlier, Psalms 91, I always, you know, keep that close. But when you're around young people and you have to teach young people how to persevere, you know, that's why I'm so proud of my guys, because a lot of other teams and a lot of other players would have quit, even subconsciously. Sometimes you quit and you're quitting subconsciously. But the fact that they're paying attention in practice, the fact that they know that they just need something to go their way, but they're keeping they're keeping that work. You know, we, we didn't have to get guys up at uh, in the morning to practice, and we practiced in the morning in the last uh, few weeks, and it's 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 good to see that they have some fruit of their labor. And again, as long as you have a game to play, and I told them, you know, before the game for Valley. Make sure you deposit each possession. You want you're trying to now ask for extra. You're trying to ask for extra games, extra possessions after the season is over uh, in the regular season. So you got to start. It ain't coming from the air. You got to deposit it. So you got to make those sacrifices and 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 deposit those possessions when no one's around, when there's no fans, when it's just you and basketball. Hey man, air yeah, coach. Like I said, no, I'm. Like I said, it's my father. See, he's like, y'all say, say this time. He said, son, he's like, every motion counts. From, there you go. From the weight room to the court to the film room to the bus, every motion counts. So my father always used to say, every motion counts. And 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 you know what? That's that's profound because we take that for granted. Every motion counts, not every day, <laughs> not every second, because you can waste a day in second just sitting there. The body was meant to move. The brain was meant to, something was meant in your body to move your spirit. Every motion counts and you can do it for the right reasons or for the wrong reasons. And they're going to have good consequences or bad consequences. So I love that. That knowledge from you, from your dad. That's the best way to, to end the show, man. I can't say nothing. I can't top that. JR. Every <laughs> motion counts. Every motion counts. Guess what? So every motion counts. We'll have one more motion for you. For That's SIT right. tournament episode That's right. next Tuesday, and then we might not have a show that follows. But we, but I will be in tow with the Ram, the Ramley. I'll be there, Savannah. Know that. Hey, Jr. You, you are, you are Ramley. So you better be there. You better be there. And and um, we we are just so blessed that you are with us and that you're you you've done so much for us behind the scenes you know that nobody knows about nobody sees that that given your time your talent and and your wisdom especially from the people that you know uh starting with senior you know that that's huge man passing that down to us and our young men anytime coach but folks we'll be back next week coach Gill and myself let's get it episode 14 we out let's get it